What's up YouTube? I am John Graham and for several months now I have been obsessed with AirCrete. Uh, I'm sure you've probably, if you've gotten to me, you've been through a dozen videos already. But AirCrete is where you basically take Portland cement, mix it with a little bit of water, and you get a nice slurry and then you fold in what looks like shaving cream but it's foam and that foam is generated from dish soap. Now, <clears throat> the reason you do that is because it increases the volume but it maintains the rigidity and it dries overnight. You can work with it overnight and it cures in about 30 days and there's all kind of awesome things being made out of AirCrete but you gotta have an AirCrete foam generator. So I started looking at all the different YouTube videos and there are a bunch and it just looked like a cumbersome mess every time I tried to figure out how to make one. Uh, no, no disparaging comments to those guys that have gone before me and succeeded. I just couldn't get my head wrapped around it. I'm not necessarily um, the most engineering minded, I don't think, and so I wanted to try to figure out a way to create something that required very little actual sawing or cutting or drilling, very little, and everything was accessible and available at your Home Depot, your Harbor Freight, your uh, Walmart, Amazon, of course, and I think I've come up with it. Now it's not $40, it's not $30, it comes in at about $100 for all of this stuff and when you see the finished product you go that doesn't look like a $100 kind of a deal but when you see the foam you'll go that's worth hundred bucks. So let me kind of talk you through it. There are three critical components. We're already assuming you've got an air compressor, okay? And that air compressor has got um, a quick connect on the end, uh, probably the female end of the quick connect and if it doesn't then you can buy an adapter for that, that's not a big deal. But other than that, the only thing you're going to need is something to cut with. Um, namely, you'll have to cut one piece of two inch PVC, use a jigsaw um, or a handsaw. Uh, you can also, uh, you're going to need to cut some tubing pieces, and I just used a pocket knife for that. And you're going to need to drill two holes, that's it. And you'll need a three quarter inch paddle bit, like a hole saw, I'll show you that, hold on. This thing right here, three quarter inch, little bit goes in your drill. That's it, guys. That's all you gotta do. And then you just gotta screw things together and glue things together. So let's get to that point. Okay, there are three important parts to this. Once, of course, you've got your air compressor. That's not, I'm not counting that. But the three important parts are the, the reservoir for your fluid, which is about, uh, for five gallons, you're gonna have about two cups of uh, dish soap. Everybody online is recommending the uh, seventh generation dish soap. Um, and that's what I used and it worked great. I'm gonna try something out differently uh, here in a little bit. We'll see if it's any better. But here is the secret weapon, okay? In all of these other things, there's been a, either a very pressurized uh, container for your fluid you have to build, or like one guy did a thing with a, um, uh, I can't think of the name of the valve. What's it called? Anyway, it's a pressure reducing valve which is supposed to um, draw in fluid and I tried it and I couldn't make it work. There's probably some good reasons why, but um, I never could make that work. So I thought, I, I need to find a tank that I can use. I don't have to build out a PVC because that just seems like it's gonna not hold enough and, and all that kind of stuff. And so, here we go. The Aquatainer. This is a camping water container. You just put water in it and take it camping. Now here's the cool thing. Now pay no attention to the little hose doodad that I have in here. This is the cool thing. That Aquatainer has this cap on it, okay? Now the idea is that you can unscrew this little nozzle and flip it on the other side and you can have a pouring spigot for when you're camping. But that's not what we used it for. Same spigot, same, same cap with a Rainbird adapter Rainbird stuff is cheap. I think this costs 60 cents, the little gray piece in there. That's a three quarter inch thread on one end and a barb on the other for a half inch or three eighths inch uh, hose right here and then a pipe clamp, okay? A little Teflon tape and some sealant I'll show you in a minute, beautiful. On the other end, we've taken just a little piece of vinyl tubing and let me say this is half inch inside diameter three quarter inch outside diameter. Don't get the uh, five eighths outside diameter because it'll crimp and it just, it, you don't wanna have to mess with that, all right? Then right here I have a quarter inch to quarter inch brass coupler with a uh, wire, um, excuse me, a hose clamp. And we screw on a quick connect uh, for your air compressor, okay? 
So here's the other side right here. We have a three quarter inch uh, mount right here and a half inch inside diameter barb. And this is also Rainbird. I think it's like 60 cents. And the same, same tubing, a wire, uh, excuse me, a, a hose clamp. On this end, we have a standard water hose repair kit where you simply take your, uh, your barbed end here, shove it inside this tube, put the hose clamp on here, and I've got a quick connect. I'll explain that in a minute. Now, in my little system here, the Achilles heel is clearly this one hole that I drilled right there. Okay, I'm gonna show you some pictures of what it looks like when you get it. It's got a little cap, you've got a little nipple there, and you've gotta kind of cut that nipple off, So, and then take that drill bit I showed you, drill that hole poke that in there and thread it carefully in with a whole lot of pvc tape and seal it and it works great but once this can gets low on fluid it's going to start to wobble and so you got to put some sort of a foundation on it so that uh it won't fall off so it won't fall off into the ground because you don't want that connection to get bumped and messed up okay so I'm gonna put a whole lot of sealant on that here in a few minutes all right so here's what the tank looks like when assembled pretty nifty in the spirit of full disclosure I blew up two of these tanks <laughs> this is my third one the first one I blew up because I wasn't using a large enough exit uh, for the water the fluid to go out I was using a tiny little hose that I got with a, with a kit and um, it was too much resistance and the air overtook the amount, the ability of the water to get out of the tank. The second time was a similar reason. I filled the thing all the way to the top and there was no room for air to uh, compress. It was just like, boom, it just blew up. So um, do this, only fill this thing up halfway. I promise you, you, you'll be standing there for a long time making foam before you have to put in more water. But just don't put more than, uh, you know, three or four gallons in this tank and it'll save you some grief. Part two of the amazing foam generator system here, hoses. Now, of course, you've got the hose, the air compressor hose that's already factored in. I'll show you where that comes in in a second. But you've got to have two hoses to get the water, the air into the tank and the fluid back out of the tank into the gun. Nothing complicated here. Uh, the exit, simple leader hose, seven bucks at Walmart. Um, and I've got quick connect tips right here. We'll talk more about that. You'll see that in action in a second. And then the air hose. You buy a 10 foot run of this uh, vinyl air hose. Again, three quarter exterior, half inch interior. And you put two of these air compressor quick connect guys on there. The threads are on here, yeah, it's fine. You don't have to worry about it. And put a couple of the pipe clamps on there. There you go, there's your hoses. Part three, the foam gun itself. Now, before I show you how the foam gun gets put together, let me tell you what's inside it, because really that's the important thing. And it's so simple, it's ridiculous. Scotch Bright, I think they're called steel scrubbing pads, stainless steel scrubbing pads. This is not steel wool. Steel wool is what you uh, sand with or, or try to get rust off of things with. This is a steel scrubbing pad. And you can get these on Amazon uh, a bunch at a time. I bought mine at Ace Hardware. But I have about, I got three three packs and I got about, I think seven or eight of them in here, okay? Now, one problem we ran into was once we started the, uh, the pressure, pushing those steel things to the end of the gun, well, it was clogging up the gun. So what do we do? Now I saw Honeydew Carpenter put a couple of links to chain. That's a great idea. I got an even better one. A whisk. 88 cents at Walmart. Shove this guy down inside, then put in your steel wool pieces. That steel wool's not gonna get past this. Bada bing, bada boom. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm gonna actually take you inside Home Depot right now where I got all of the pieces and dry fit them together because I had already made mine and I didn't see the point of uh, trying to make a new one, buying all that crap. So I just put it together in Home Depot without the glue. I think you'll get the idea. Here's that. So here are the pieces and parts. This is a pre-configured two inch by two foot piece of pipe. I'll show you the price tag on that. Two inch cap. Two inch flange with a uh, threaded on one end and just glue on that side. This is a reducer from a two inch uh, threaded male to a one and a half inch um, 
that side. And this one and a half inch reducer down to, or actually bushing down to half inch. So you can probably figure out how to put it together. The only thing you're gonna have to cut, two of the cuts, two of the mechanical things you're gonna have to do is drill a hole right here so the foam can get out and chop off a tiny piece of this. That's all you're gonna need. Just a little bit of this. I'll show you that in a second. Then up here, this is what I actually started with, but had I known that this was available, I could have saved about six bucks, and I'll explain that in a minute. But, really simple assembly. Put the cap there, cement that, cement this, cement this, like that. Screw that bad boy in there like that. Cut off your piece of two inch. We'll pretend I've cut this off, but they won't let me because I'll have to buy it. it. Goes right there. And then this guy goes right here. Now, again, if I'd have used this guy instead, I would have saved a coupling when I went to my Y adapter. I'll show you that in a second. So why do we need the uh, screw off adapter? Well. You're gonna have to put the stuff in there and then you're probably gonna have to get the stuff out because that's not gonna last forever. You know, after you've used it for concrete, you know, making foam a little while, you're gonna want to uh, replace your steel pads. All right, so that's why we have to spend a little bit more to get the threading going. Let me go show you what I was talking about before. So here we are on the water hose, garden hose, kind of adapters and doodads aisle and um, just to tell you what I was talking about earlier, this is the piece that I used before, okay? Connected to my half inch PVC pipe. The critical component is the Y adapter, all right? But you'll notice they come in female on one end and two males on the other, right? Well, what happens here, I can't make those go together. They don't wanna get along at all because, so you gotta spend eight more bucks for a coupler. They're really proud of those couplers. But if I go with this, needed okay so you've seen how the PVC pieces go together I've made my change right here from the female uh, hose fitting to the male hose fitting to eliminate that coupler that saves me about seven bucks so here is my uh, adjusted thing I've also added quick connectors everywhere there's a water hose uh, connection because it just makes things easier to get off and on if you need to go carry the gun apart from uh, everything else if you want to set it up and store it if you uh, you know what if you need to get inside the chamber you don't have to take everything off and also it offers a little bit of a swivel to your hoses so that helps too all right so let's talk about the apparatus on the outside of the hose so our pressurized air comes in here and comes to a T at the T it goes two directions obviously and they both have valves one is for your fluid one is for your uh, air pressure that's going to um, make the foam now there they are closed. And you're gonna have to find a happy spot of how much pressure goes to each one. And just about there is about right. But it takes a little experimenting, all right? I've got a quick connect here for the air that feeds the tank. And then this is a hard connect directly into the Y, coming in the back of the gun shoots air in there after it meets the water. So again, quick connect right here, a male, male, male T, quarter inch, two valves, quick connect on this end, and a hard connect hose with hose clamp, same tubing we've been using, comes to the back here and the Y. Now there's this Y, you can find these at any store practically, it's just a garden hose Y. And these have closed valves. Now, important, <laughs> don't leave the water one closed if you're pressurizing it, okay? Make sure that you open this up. But this is handy when you don't have pressure, but you still have the water connected and you don't want it leaking all over your foot. So you just close that there. There's really never gonna be a need to close that because this accomplishes that. 
once the combination of the fluid and the air comes in the back, it shoots in here, gets agitated by all the steel wool, comes out here and makes foam. As I mentioned, you're only gonna have to drill one hole and it's right there. Uh, you drill that hole through the cap because obviously the foam's gotta get out. And I had this little brass fitting sitting around and I thought, eh, I'll just shove that thing on the end of it just for fun, but you don't have to use that. So that's it, it's pretty simple. I only had to chop off a tiny piece of half inch PVC and drill a hole down here at the end for the foam to get out of the gun. And I had to cut a couple of pieces of tubing and I had to drill that one hole in the tank. That's it, it's amazing. I'm gonna seal some things up and then I'll be able to show you exactly how this thing works. All right, so here we go. Air compressor, air hose, feeds right there. This one's going here, valve is currently shut off. Pay attention to that. Valve is currently shut off, valve is currently shut off. Air goes into the water tank right here. Okay, again, valve is currently shut off. And then solution comes back out to back here. So air is going. Now when you start this thing, you're gonna wanna start with the fluid first. Get the fluid going. That's why we have two of these valves. Start the fluid first. Open that joker, make sure that's open, okay? Then add in your uh, your air pressure. Let's let's see it do some stuff. Valves are open. Valves are closed. One other important thing to note, it's a good idea to keep your tank above the grade of where your gun is. If you've got a ladder, something you can do to get that elevated, it's gonna make it a lot easier to keep that pressure from building up too high and blow up your tank, because don't do that. That's just another $15 you gotta go deal with. All right, have fun. Let's make some aircrete.